And there's another story just like that, which is the remarkable story of a company called Cocomat, which Paul, I have no idea what Paul's going to do. Paul always does whatever he wants to do, okay? So I have no idea. So I'm in for a surprise with Paul, as I'm sure you are. So Paul, Cocomat. Çok güzel uh, Türkçe dil konuşmak. Ben uh, hen, henüz, henüz Türkçe konuşamıyorum. That's why I'm going to speak in English now. I feel ashamed because I'm half Turkish, half Greek. But uh, I cannot speak yet good enough to say the story in Turkish, okay? So 25 years back in Greece, by the way, you've been down there to my place, no? You have. So... 25 years back, in 89, there was a big problem in Greece. Poverty. Nowadays, we have crisis. We have two cars, we have mobiles, we have this, we have that, and we are talking about crisis. But at that time, there was no money. Poverty. So I was looking for a job. And uh, I decided to talk to nature, not to people, not to banks. And I said, if I get knowledge, I will get it from nature. Because I'm here and you are here because of a natural process. Your dad made love to your mom, no? No? And then you're here. So I decided to do more or less the same. Go at the beach side with my girlfriend and listen to nature, to birds, to the sea. So when you go to the seaside with your girlfriend, what do you do? You swim, you swim, no? That's it. You know, yeah, man, we are Mediterranean, so we know. <laughs> so I went down there, started swimming, and then I got tired, and then I got out. And then uh, there was a big mattress made out of seaweed. You understand me? Yeah, sure. Yes. Who made the seaweed mattress? Sorry, what? Who made the seaweed mattress there waiting for me? The sea, nature, okay? Then I, I started jumping there, playing, you know, and then I slept, sleeping. <laughs> and then I woke up and I said, wow, this is beautiful. Like you, no? Huh? Beautiful mattress. Why don't I make a mattress and take it home? And then I was very proud with my girlfriend at that time to make a mattress. And I covered that with a cotton eh, cloth and I took it home. And then I went to my mother and said, hey, this is the best mattress in the world. Have you ever slept on seaweed? You. Have you? Where? Uh, in the south, part of south part with your boyfriend? Uh, with my husband. You enjoy that, no? Why didn't you make a mattress yourself then? So I did that. And I took home the mattress and my mother said, uh, come on. Don't say to, to your grandmother how to suck eggs, you know. I used to do that many, many years. Every year, my parents, my mother said, that we had to come here in order to make mattresses for the following year. So there was no money to start a company. I had the product and I had nature with me because nature loves us, but we must have big ears and go to the woods and listen. Do you do that? Do you go with your partner to the woods and listen to nature? You do, no? Do you think that uh, we have the knowledge as soon as we are born? Eh? When were you born, Sam? 1950. 1950, no? So you think when you were born, you knew a lot of things, or you think, no, I learned everything at schools and all this? School. At schools. I believe that we learn very little at schools. I believe that we are born with a lot of knowledge. Maybe. Maybe. So we have to open our ears eh, and listen to what nature says. Knowledge is not only in the society. Society is screaming at us, telling us don't play with the balloons there. Because I said to Mr. Economides, by the way, who is a great guy, man. He's an international guy. Thank you for inviting me here. <laughs> Peter, thank you. So I said, come on and play a little bit eh, with me. And he said, no, 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 wait a minute. We must be serious here. We have a job to do, you know. So be a child. Don't, if you want to do something which is out of the box, don't accept what the society says. Otherwise, I would never 
make a mattress out of seaweed because the society now says that you have to make a mattress with a machine, no? whereas we don't have machines because we had no money. And I believe that us, Mediterraneans, Turkey, Greece, where the economy is thriving, but, but we are not as rich as Germans or whatever, we are very lucky because we can think and invent new things. You understand me? Yeah. Are you going to invent something? Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully, yes. So we are very lucky to have not as much as the northern countries. And then we think, we think, and then we invent things like mattress that I made out of seaweed. And then all these institutions, they must support you. But if you go there like me, they say, come on, this guy, you know, something wrong with him. Huh? Would you trust me if you see me at the streets? Huh? You would, no? If I ask you to go dancing with me tonight, would you come? No. <laughs> if I would be wearing a, a tie and I would be serious, you say, come on, he's a decent businessman, let's go. So that was my case. I used to go to Greek banks saying that I've got an idea to make mattresses out of seaweed and horse hair and cocoa fiber, and the banks were closed. But I'm clever, I'm Greek, like, eh? like you are Turkish, we are the same. So I went around and I asked all my friends, I had very little friends by the way, I was too young, they wouldn't trust me, but my mother, my father, said give me 1,000 drachmas, at that time it was drachmas, no? Like lira, no? So, and they gave me money, many people, little money, and I took the money, and I put it on a bank. I went there with a lot of money. I get inside. Hello, here I am. I need an account. I give you the money. So the guy was happy. And I said, could you give me a confirmation that I have here so much money? And he gave me that. And with that paper, what would you do? What would you do? With the paper, somebody gives you that you have an account with 100,000 euros. You go to another bank. And you say, listen, I'm rich. No? Would you give me a loan? So what I'm trying to say is that there are more solutions than problems in life. Do you agree with me? Yeah. More solutions than problems, no? So if the bank says, no, 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 your project is no good, I'm not going to give you anything, you go the other way around. So, and I got a loan, the first and the last loan in Kokoma business, because they gave me 92 million drachmas, which is around 250,000 euros nowadays, no? And I had to pay 420 million, almost five times as much, because the interest rate, it was more than 30%. How much is that in Turkey now, sir? You've got a tie, you know all this business. Something eh? 10. Something 10. <laughs> sir? Something 10%. 10%. Ten. Ten. Ten percent is okay, but how can you pay interest rate of 35% plus some extra money for the director? Otherwise, he doesn't open the door, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or you expect the loan and he's sick, uh, he cannot come Monday, but you expect the money, you know? So anyway, that was an exuberant amount of money you have to pay back to the banks. That's why all banks, they have a corner shop, no? In Turkey, it's the same. The best places they are eh, covered by banks. So anyway, what I had, it was enthusiasm. I was crazy about the product. Nobody could stop me. Nobody could say to me, don't do that, because I was in love. I was sure that people would sleep on my mattress. You're not sleeping now, are you? No. no. <laughs> they would sleep on my mattress, and they would say, this is the best bed in the world. I knew that. And I started giving them a mattress with a zipper. Have you got a zipper in your mattress, sir? You? At home? Are you sleeping, man? No. No, it's not boring what I say, no? Wait. Yeah? Have, have, ha, ah, you wash there. <laughs> but have you got a zipper at home? Yeah. You have. You wash your mattress? No. You're lying to me. You're not washing your mattress. <laughs> Be honest. <laughs> eh? At home you have a mattress, but you don't wash it. Who washes his mattress? <laughs> Nobody. You do? <laughs> eh? Come on, tell us, what is your mattress? Is it Kokoma then? Uh, uh, I'm not sure. Oldumun Yatani is her son's mattress. 
Ah, all right, all right, that's good. He made a handmade mattress. This is what I'm saying. We made mattresses, handmade mattresses. And in, if you come to the factory and you are very welcome to visit us, and uh, you are very welcome to use my email address, which is P-A-U-L. You better write that, you might need that. P-A-U-L, Paul, at coco, C-O-C-O hyphen mat, dot com, dot com. You will be my guest in Greece. And how generous are you, sir? How can you invite, how many are you here? 500 people? And you invite all of us to Greece or to Amsterdam? You know what we do? If you care about eh, your customers, you go to a hotel, because we have many hotels, and you say to the hotelier, listen, I've got the best beds in the world. And the hotelier says, I don't want to know anything. Eh? Crisis. I bought uh, beds. Get out. Next one says, hey, you're too expensive. Eh? I don't want your mattresses. And then the third one, you, you've got a nice face. You say, let's talk. So what I do with you is you tell me how much you want to pay, because we are not cheap, you know? And then the difference between what you want to pay and what I offer you, I buy back in nights. Did you get the point? Did you? I explained to you again. I go to a hotel and they pay whatever they can afford, if I like the hotel, if we like the hotel. And then the difference they don't want to pay, we become their customers. We buy nights. So, is that your girlfriend? No? Your friend? <laughs> you are alone? Sure. <laughs> you come to Greece then. And I pay, I pay for you all the nights. Why? <laughs> because when you come and you sleep to a Kokoma mattress for a week, eh, you fall in love. And you come back and you say, I need this mattress. So this is a, a different approach. Why should I pay a TV or a radio to talk about me. I let my products talk about Kokomat, no? So you go to a hotel, you sell your products, you buy back nights for you, you come and sleep. The hotelier is very happy because normally we send people all over the world, not at the high season, eh? when the season is lower a little bit, not in August. If you send me an email and you tell me, Paul, I'm coming in August, say, okay, but you come to my house then because all hotels might be busy, you know what I mean? But in such a way, it works perfect eh, for the hotel, for us and for you. That's why we grow in a very stable way, okay? And we have many, many shops around the world, 60-something, I can't remember anymore, and I invited you, what did I say? You are eh, a very nice guitarist, and you can come to my place, to our places, and you play the guitar. And then he performs in our shops. We arrange food for his clients, for his customers. He has an entry fee for everybody to go. Some of this money he will give to an institution for kids. We must be nice. We must run like this, but we must see what is behind us and help them, no? So he has to do the same. And we organize an event in New York, in Soho, Mercer Street, 49, the most beautiful shop in New York for beds. So what I'm trying to say is that it doesn't matter what the society says about you, what the institutions say about you, that uh, your business is not good enough to get a loan. You think of different ways in order to... I have what? Man, I finished. So, yeah, four, four minutes. You have to think of different ways in order to go to your goal. So Kokomat is not based on a normal way of thinking. It is completely different. And you are young people, and you live in a society like Turkey nowadays. You are thriving. I know the economy is very good. But st still, go to nature and listen. They are waiting. They are waiting for you. Eh? A lot of natural raw materials in, ab in abundance we have here in Mediterranean Sea. And then you make a nice company. And by the way, when I started this company, I thought my father used to work in Germany for more than 25 years, Gastarbeiter, no? Who has got somebody who works in Germany now or in these countries? Many of you, no? Who? Some people, of course. Nobody works up there. Look at that. Turkey is full, eh? You don't send people abroad. But anyway, Greeks now back again in Germany, no? For different restaurants and all this stuff. So I was thinking, my poor father at that time, he was completely illegal. 
He couldn't stay in Germany. He needed papers. He needed that. So I must help other people. And if you help somebody unexpectedly, he, they are giving it back to you, the energy. And nowadays, we have 25 disabled people working with us, with us, not for us, with us. And they do a great job. And we are happy. And I can go to where Mr. Peter Economides is asking me, and I go, I feel free. Because other people, they can do a job for me, because I'm their brother, you know. And do you have a car? You yes. yes, I don't. <laughs> I don't have a car. I've got only a bike. And I went from Amsterdam to Athens by bike. And now Mr. Economides, I hope he's going to do that for us, is going to organize a trip from Athens via Istanbul to go to where, Peter? Pejin. Why? Because some poor people, not you are not poor, eh? by the way, you've got so many customers, but there are some poor people with olive oil, with some bread they are making, some uh, spaghetti or uh, whatever, they cannot show their products anywhere. So I want to go by bike from Athens to Pejin, and I want to eat every day figs, dry bread, dry tomatoes, and Mr. Economides has to show eh, the products via CNN or BBC or whatever, and these people there are watching TV to see that a crazy guy like me and some of you, would you like to come with me? No? You would love to. One day, one day. Who wants to come with me by bike? Men, just send me an email. Send an email to Mr. Economides. We must make it true, you know, we must go there. So, and these people then, they've got a chance to show their products without going through the normal, expensive channels. Okay? So, the same way then we use to think about our raw materials, like we use, as I said, Cotton, wool, we have 11 million sheep in Greece. Wool costs $5 per kilogram. You know what we do with our uh, wool? We throw that away. There is not one factory cleaning wool. So Greece is importing wool from New Zealand. We are, we are doing the same eh? from uh, Australia. Why? Because people, they stay in big cities and they don't listen to nature. So if somebody wants to make $55 million, eh? 11 million multiplied by $5 per kilo, it is $55 million. And nobody has a factory in Greece. Am I right, Mr. Peter? No factories. So we have then, if we want to promote our small producers, you must organize an event in the middle of Athens, in a Kokoma shop in Kolonaki, where some young ladies, not old ladies, because they know how to do that, young ladies, they must come and start knitting a pullover for me to wear, made out of wool that we throw away. We don't care about that. And then we import cars like yours, you know. We do this, mobiles, yeah? smoking, alcohol and all this, and then big bellies, and we are in crisis. We are not in crisis. We are in crisis up here. All right, thank you, and if you have questions, because I finished the time.